But today we are completing the 3-3 lesson, which is transforming linear functions. So we were able to teach it all, I think, within 30 minutes, because there's really not much to it. Um, we're not going super in depth into all the types of transformations. We are just focusing on basically it's a graph move up, down, left, or right. All right, we're not focusing on like stretches or compressions or flips right now. We'll get to that later in the semester. Just if you can figure out if the graph is moving up, down, left, right, and how to make your new equation, then I'll be happy. All right, so success criteria, how you'll be tested. Can you identify what happens when we add a constant to a function? Can you identify what happens when we multiply the output or input of a function? And that's pretty much it. <laughs> so I don't have a collection of helpful videos for linear functions, but I'm sure you can find some on YouTube that are short, sweet, and to the point. Because uh, this is the first time that we are like teaching transformations of linear functions. Normally we say transformations for like other things, but you know, recordings. So if you want to rewatch the lesson, go ahead. You do have a worksheet, and my first hour have like 25 minutes to work on it. So that's how short the lesson is. Um, but the worksheet is in line with what you'll see on the test and with what you'll see on your entrance ticket. So just if you have questions, make sure that you're asking. And I am still, you know, coming around the last five minutes class and giving you points for what you've done so far. So last hour, it's like I walk up to a kid who has nothing on their paper after 25 minutes, and they're like, oh, well, I was confused. And I'm like, okay, so you didn't ask, and you didn't check the answer key, like you did it, you just did nothing, you just sat there for 25 minutes. So that's not an excuse. That's not an excuse. Being confused when you ask questions. You don't just sit there for 25 minutes and do nothing. Just FYI. All right, so that normally it would be an exit ticket since the lesson's so short. We're making it an entrance ticket for tomorrow. So like first 15 minutes of class, you'll do like three problems on what we learned today. So again, if you have questions, you need to be asking. Um, any questions about anything else? All right, so just we've already talked about this. Just friendly reminders. Deadline for late work from the pink folders is this Friday, so get it done. All right, so the lesson, start here. All right, first, there are more transformations than just vertical and horizontal shifts. All right, there's flipping graphs, they're stretching or compressing them. So in our notes, you might see some examples of that. But again, we're mostly just focusing on vertical translations and horizontal translations. So translations are where we're just like picking up the graph and moving it somewhere else. We're not changing the size of it. We're not flipping it. All right. It is literally just picking it up and putting it somewhere else. So if it's a vertical translation, we're moving the graph either up or down. All right, and here's what that'll look like. So let's say I have a function, and the function can be anything. It could be 3x plus 5 or 2x minus 4, something like that. But we're going to add a constant, which is represented by k right now, to the end of it. What is a constant? So right now the constant is represented by k, but it's not a variable. What is a constant? So you it's the opposite of a coefficient. It's not a number that's in front of a variable. It's not a variable. It is Almost up to you know what the constant is. Just throw something out there. 
What's a constant or what's an example of a constant? A whole number or basically just any number. It could be a decimal, but a number that isn't attached to a variable. So like a single number. All right, so K can be any single number that we're adding to the problem. So you should all be writing this down. It's the majority if you didn't know. But a constant is a single number. All right, so what we're adding to these functions or subtracting from the functions is a single number. And that will move the graph up or down by however much K equals. Just show it to me back there, and then put it in the trash. Okay. All right, so here's an example. Let's say our given function for f of x is 2x plus 4. All right. And then let's say g of x. So that means a different graph if it's a different letter is equal to f of x plus a constant. What do we want the constant to be? Just throw out an example. All right, I heard seven first. So g of x is f of x plus seven. Without even plugging in f of x, I know that the graph moves in what direction? It moves up because the k is positive, the constant is positive, and it moves up by how much? Good. So this moves up by seven. All right. So that's like a good question that'll be on your test. There's literally like two questions on your topic test from this lesson. All right, so if I put something like that, what value makes it move up by seven? Right. Um, another question is like, what's the new equation for g of x if it's f of x plus seven? Well, all you have to do, since g of x is f of x, so what does f of x equal? 2x plus 4, it's, G, it's f of x plus 7. So you write down what f of x equals and put plus 7. And then you're just combining like terms. So does 2x have a like term that I need to combine it with? So I just write 2x and then 4 plus 7, what's that? So those are like terms or constants are always like terms that can be combined. And then notice what changed in the formula. Is the slope still the same? So what changed? What's that called? It is a constant, but I was looking for the y intercept. All right, so changing your y intercept moves your graph up or down, depending on if it's a positive K or a negative K. Does that make sense? And to know how much it moved by, well, it was originally at four, now it's at 11. You can count on your fingers, or if it gives you a graph, you can count on your graph, but that's seven, all right? Um, and then if it's minus K, it moved in what direction? Yeah. All right, um, so let's keep going. We have horizontal shifts. Now look at how it's different from what we did before. So it's still adding or subtracting something. So it's like for going to the right, it's subtracting H. Going to the left, it's adding H, and H is just any number. All right, but notice it's not outside the parentheses. So over here, K is being added to the output. Here, H is being added or subtracted to the input. 
All right, so if you want to just look at the graph and say, let's see, let me put an example up there. Let's say f of x is 3x minus 5. And g of x is 3x minus, give me a number. I'll do 8 because I don't want to do 5. We already have. I don't want you to do it. All right, but yeah, so our h, our h value is 8. And we're plugging it in where the x goes. So really, I probably should have wrote this differently. I'll write it over here. But it would be f of x minus 8. All right, that might be what your instructions say. This is what it looks like plugged in. So the x minus 8 goes where the x goes. So that's your input. Does that make sense? All right, now looking at it over here and following these rules, which you can use your notes on your exit ticket and on your form A of the test, what would you tell me is the movement? If it said like describe the transformation, is, is it moving up, down, left, right? If it's f of x minus 8, it's moving to the right, you see? So it moves right how many units? So it moves right 8 units. That makes sense. Any questions? And I wish I had an easy way for you to remember the horizontal shifts because I know it looks a little bit backwards. Because you would think like if it's moving to the right, it should be plus h. I don't know how else to describe it. Like it's just the opposite. All right. The vertical one is easy because it goes up or it goes down, just like rise over run. Horizontal shifts, it's just the opposite. Okay. So exactly so if you didn't hear that if the number being added or subtracted is outside the parentheses it is a vertical shift right so it's being done to the output is how we describe it down here it's inside the parentheses with the x so that has to be either a left or right shift, and that's being done to the input, if that makes sense. All right. Um, so that's like a good test question over here, is like giving you this and telling you to describe the movement. Um, over here is another good test question where it says, what's the new graph of G of X? So that's what we'll keep doing. Um, so this is what it looks like when we plug this in. All right, plug it in for the x. So it's three times x minus eight minus five, put it in parentheses. And does this look like slope intercept form? No. How can I make it look like slope intercept form? Good. So what do I get when I distribute? 3x minus 24. So I have g of x equals 3x minus 24, bring down the minus 5. So that didn't just go away. All right, does it look like slope intercept form yet? I just need to combine like terms, right? Does the 3x have a like term? What's negative 24 minus 5? Good. So that would be my equation. Any questions? All right. Um, so I like showing you guys how to like check your thoughts in Desmos since you do have access to Desmos on your test. So let's just kind of go in there. Um, let's see. Desmos. So like if you were asked to describe the movement of something and you're given like two equations, 
So maybe f of x is my original and g of x, maybe it looks something like this, like x plus five plus four, right? How would you describe that change with words? Did it move up, down, left, right? It moved left. So originally we had the red line. Now we have the green line. And it moved to the left. I would also probably argue that you could also say that it moved up. But when it's in this format, like on your test, where it's being done to the input, it's a horizontal shift. So that would be left. Questions there? All right, so then let's do some examples. Um, there are some in here that clearly are not vertical or horizontal shifts. We'll just practice making the equations for those ones. All right, but one and two, it's either horizontal or vertical shift. So like look at one. Um, and the instructions say to describe the transformation going from graph F to graph G and then write an equation for you. So f of x is my original, g of x is my transformed one, and f of x minus two. So looking at our little key that we have above, what type of transformation is that? It's a vertical translation, so up or down? Okay, so it went down how many units? All right, questions there? And if the equations weren't given to you, maybe just F and G, like how it might be on your test, you can just count your Y intercept. Going from F, we moved down one, two units. All right, now we need to make the equation for G. So G is F of X minus two. All right, so what does F of X equal? It equals one half X. So it's F of X minus two. So here's F of X, one half X minus two. And you're finished when it's in slope intercept form. So is G of X in slope intercept form? Yes. And that does match up with what we have on the graph. All right, it does have a Y intercept of negative two, and it does go up one to the right two. Make sense? All right, let's do number two. Here's f of x, it's negative x plus one. G of x is f of x minus two. So is that two affecting the input or the output? The input, because it's inside the parentheses with the x. So is that a vertical or a horizontal shift? And is it left or right? Good. So it's going right, how many units? Good. So that's how you describe the transformation. That's all we're looking for. For the equation, though, you have to do some plugging in. I feel like that's the only hard part. So it says g of x is f of x minus 2. So that means that the minus 2, or basically what the parentheses are, are going to go where the x is. So it's going to be negative parentheses x minus two plus one. Does that make sense? You see that? You see how we did that? Because it's affecting the input. So what's in the parentheses over here for the g of x is going to replace the x in f of x. All right. So 
So d of x is f of x minus 2. So we put f of x there, but instead of writing x, we put x minus 2 in parentheses. All right, now does it look like slope intercept form? How can I make it look like slope intercept form? Distribute that negative that's out here. So distribute. What happens when you distribute a negative? What are you multiplying by? Basically a negative one. So what is negative one times x? Negative x. And negative one times negative two? Positive two. Distributing was a big issue on the first topic test. Just like Mess up distributing, you mess up the whole problem. All right, but now combine like terms, and this is still for number two. Does the x have a like term? No, so just copy it over negative x, and then what's two plus one? That is my equation for g of x. Questions there. All right, so we're done with the describing the transformations because these ones down here are not vertical or horizontal. Um, but we're going to make the equation for G. Still just practicing plugging in whatever it says to plug in. So for the g of x, it is f of negative x. So that means that instead of writing x in our f of x, we're replacing it with what? Negative x. All right, because the difference here, like what are they doing? Are they doing something to the input or the output? They're doing something to the input because it's inside the parentheses. So that means I need to copy down what f of x equals, which is 3x, but instead of writing x, because that's our input, we're going to write negative x. And whenever you plug stuff in, it's a good rule of thumb to put it in parentheses. That way you know like to multiply or to distribute, things like that. What is three times negative x? Negative three x. And is that good? Are we done? Yes, because it looks more like slope intercept form. All right, try number four. Just try making the equation. You don't have to describe the transformation. Just try making the events. All right, what did we get for number four? All right, so I wrote it down here, one half x minus one. Anyone get something different? All right, so let's see if you did it right. G of x is f of one half x. So is something being done to the input or to the output? The input. So that means G of x is whatever f of x is equal to, but instead of writing x, what are we replacing it with? One half x. And like I said, it's a good rule of thumb to put it in parentheses when you plug it in. Sometimes it doesn't matter because outside the parentheses, there's always like a positive one, right? So does that really change anything when I multiply it? No, so the parentheses go away. Does it look like slope intercept form? So then we're done. All right, any questions? All right, 
right, so then on to the back side. All right, so for five and six, we're just going to be making the equation. Don't worry about the transformation because we're not going that deep for these ones. Um, but for number five, it says g of x equals two times f of x. So is something being done to the input or the output? The output, because it's not inside the parentheses this time. And what am I doing to f of x? I'm doubling it, I'm multiplying it by two. So it's gonna be two times whatever f of x equals. What does f of x equal? X minus two. Does this look like slope intercept form? How can I make it look like slope intercept form? Good. Two times X is? And then two times negative two is? Good. All right, and that does make sense. Because when you check P of X, Y intercept is negative four, slope is two. All right, number six. G of x is one half of f of x. So is that being done to the input or the output? To the output, because it's not inside the parentheses. So it's going to be one half times whatever f of x equals. What does f of x equal? Good. And then again, how can I make it look like slope intercept form? Distribute. So what is one half times negative x? And then one half times two. Don't just um don't just not use a calculator because when I put in my calculator, I actually get. It's one half times the positive two. So 0.5 times two. Oh, I guess I did it wrong in my last hour. They told me a different number, and I believe them. All right, one half times two is four, is one. Sorry for that. But does it look more like slope intercept form? So then we are finished. Questions there? All right, so. Here's another type of problem that does help us with something on our success criteria. So scrolling down. Um, number seven says to graph f of x equals x and g of x equals three x minus two. All right, so f of x equals x is actually what's called a parent graph or a parent function, whatever you wanna call it, I'll call it a parent function. Your parent functions are always like the simplest equation that you can make. So there's parent functions for linear equations. And then later on, you'll see for absolute value, for quadratics and stuff. But this is the simplest function for linear equations. Because what's the y-intercept of that function? Zero. So I'm going to put a dot where the zero goes. And what's the slope of this function? One. So my rise over run is one over one. So I'm going up one to the right one, up one to the right one, up one to the right one, and drawing a straight line. That's my parent function. Um, the g of x is like a transformed graph. So let's graph that one. What's my y-intercept of g of x? So that would be here. What's my slope? It's three. Rise over right, so we're going up three to the right one. Always rise over right. 
right? So we're going up three to the right one and making our straight line there. And just bear with me, it's hard to make straight lines on here, but you get the point. All right, and then it says describe the transformations from F to Z. So F is in red, Z is in blue. How would you describe the vertical transformation? How much did it move up from B of X or from F of X to G of X? It went down two. And you can tell from your Y intercepts. Originally, this one had a Y intercept of zero. And this one had a y intercept of negative two. So from your graph, we went down two. Does that make sense? So use your graph to count your vertical and or horizontal shifts. All right, this one doesn't have a horizontal shift, uh, but it does do something to the slope. So I'll just write it down, even though I don't need you guys to really know this part. But the 3x means that it is stretched by a factor of three. All right, you don't need to know that part. Really, I'm just focusing on the up or down movement or horizontal movement. But I just didn't want to leave that problem incomplete. Questions? All right, so your entrance ticket, so it's going to be the first 15 minutes of class, has a problem where you're given a graph and told to find the value of K. All right, so what's the up or down movement? If it was these two graphs or this graph, what would the value of K be? It would be negative two, right? Because we are from our original graph, we went down two units. So K equals negative two. Easy, right? The second question is making the equation, just like we did in the first six problems. And you make the equation by plugging stuff in in the right spot. The third question is one of those like real world problems, but it's not difficult. Don't just see a word problem and shut down. All right, so let's talk us through like a real world situation. Let's say, and you can just add this to the bottom of your notes, but let's say for proctoring like the SATs. This function represents how I get paid. So it's f of x equals 10x plus 20, where I'm making $10 an hour, so x represents hours, and $20 just for showing up. All right, what if I can also make additional money? Like, let's say I make an additional $40 if I have more than 20 students in my room. All right, what would that affect? Would it affect your slope or your y intercept? And how do you know it's the y intercept? Like, why is it not the slope? And give me more. Explain a little bit more. Why can't it be $50 an hour? I'm just asking you to, how do you know? I'm not saying you're wrong. How do you know it affects the y-intercept versus the slope? Because the $40 isn't added every hour, is it? It's just a one-time additional bonus. Right? And that goes with my 20 because that's also like a one time payment. Does that make sense? So, what would be my new function if I got those 40 additional? 10x plus 60. Right? Um, now, let's say 
instead of being paid the additional 40, let's say they changed it to where if I have more than 20 students in my room, it's an additional $5 an hour. All right, so now instead of a one-time bonus, it's now an hourly bonus. What would that affect in my equation? Would it affect my X? So is it gonna be 10 times five? X represents hours, right? So what is changing? The amount you get paid each hour. So is that my slope or my Y intercept? The slope. That's probably what you meant when you said X, but Slope, not the X, but pages. All right, so now it's 15X, and what goes here? Plus 20. All right, so the line or something to change that time, the rate of change or your slope, your hourly rate changes. That makes sense? Any questions? All right, so then if we got that far, you know, we made our equation. Or whatever the situation is, if I asked you how does this graph change, what would you tell me? Does it move up, down, left, or right? It moves up how many? Not 60. It moves up 40 units. Because originally it was 20, now it's 60. What about down here? I mean, we didn't really do slope, so actually I'll just leave that off. But the slope would be different. All right, line or would be the same, slopes would be different. Questions? All right, so that leaves you 17 minutes to work on your assignment. I think that's plenty of time. Um, if you have questions or you're stuck, ask me or look at the key and ask me. Um, I'll check it probably like the last five minutes of class. I gave you points for whatever you get. Don't finish, it's homework.